I entered college with very little uh, exposure to, or any kind of exposure to opera singing. So when I get to college, I decide to go to a faculty recital, and you know, it's about an hour and a half long, so I find myself gazing in and out of falling asleep a little bit. And I wake up at this one moment, and when I look up, the teacher starts singing, Children, your father's dead. And I'm like, what am I getting into? It was the most weirdest thing from being an inner city kid to going to a school all the way upstate in New York. And I'd never heard any kind of music like this, though I was pursuing a major in this. It was one of the most freakiest moments of my life. And interesting enough, it sent me on a journey that now has lasted over 16 years now pursuing music and developing my talent. And it's been great. I went to college for nine years, which is typical for an opera singer. As an opera singer, the most important thing you have to do is develop your technique as a singer. And this takes time, patience, money, and a lot of investment. Um, for the voice to truly mature, you know, usually, usually voices mature into their 30s and even 40s for men typically and for people who have bigger, more dramatic voices. And these voices are needed because when you perform in an opera, you don't have any amplification. You don't sing with microphones. You sing with the natural, pure voice. And that's what really creates the power of what people feel when they hear a singer, especially in a more intimate setting. And when you're singing in an opera stage, you're singing against an orchestra of 60 players, up to 125 players. You're also singing along with the chorus, other cast members that you're singing with, and you're doing so, and you have to be heard all the way in the back of a theater that may be three to 4,000 people, full of three to 4,000 people. It's a really incredible gift that happens within singing. And after my nine years of college, I decided to move to New York. And after a year of doing some concerts here and there, I decided to take a break, and I got a job at a hedge fund, my first left turn on this journey. <laughs> and I was working there for about two years and not pursuing singing at all. And after a recital that I went to, a friend introduced me to a couple who were the founders of the Del Arte Opera Ensemble. And this is an ensemble that is in New York City that helps bridge the gap between the academic training and performance career for the opera singer. And they offer preparation for, through a music festival that they offer in the summer, they help the participants with musical preparation, language classes, acting classes, they take stage combat, a whole slew of opportunities for them. And what's amazing about this organization is that they do this free of charge to the singer. They work around work schedules, so they do all the rehearsals in the evening and on the weekends. And when they perform their summer festival in August, here's what the amazing thing is. They present opera in a black box theater. And what's amazing about experiencing opera in a black box theater, and I say this myself as an audience member at times too, is that you can be one to two feet away from someone who's singing. And when you're that close to someone and you feel the power of their voice, this unfiltered voice, it really does kind of get into the side of your core. And it's really great. And you're sitting on three sides of the performers who are giving their time. And I'd, I've done three shows with Del Arte Opera Ensemble over the past four and a half years. And it wasn't until this past summer when I was watching their production of Henry Purcell's The Fairy Queen that I really, dis really began to see how the gifts that I received from them were not what were initially apparent. It's a no-brainer to work with them because you get resume experience, you're getting stage experience, which is probably the most important thing you can do to try to eventually transition to having a career in opera. But I was sitting in the audience, the show starts, and these actors come out, and the singers are coming out, and you just feel this really this rush of energy. It's one of those magical moments that you experience in theater, and even more so because you're close, right? And I start thinking, I'm like, I can't believe these people are volunteering. And in the five years that I've been associated with this group, I never thought of my participation with this group as volunteering. And I started to feel a sense of pride, and I started to look back in how this experience started to pay it forward in my own life. During my first show, I had uh, gained so much self-esteem and confidence, and by the end of the show, it had really ignited my journey and passion to go back to singing. So, I decided to go to Germany. In the opera world, it's very typical that a lot of singers go to Germany to begin their careers. 
where in America you may have, you have one opera house, the Metropolitan Opera, which runs a full repertory of operas year round. There's only there, and so at the Metropolitan Opera they do this. And in Germany, which is a size about New Mexico, they have 57 opera houses that do the same thing. Their arts are government funded, so it kind of has a different apparatus of how, they're, um, how they can source and f do this. But what's great is they have a full staff, each opera house, these 57 opera houses have a full staff of singers, solo singers, choir, choristers, orchestra members, ballet dancers, and actors that they fully staff, that they get a full salary, pension, benefits, etc. So it's a no-brainer to go there. I go there, I learn about four and a half words of German in my three months that I'm there, trying my hardest, and I meet many agents, I sing for a lot of opera houses, and it really changed the course of how I f thought I fit into the opera world. For the first time, I kind of felt validated, I felt that my talents were being appreciated, and it was really neat. Um, and then I come back after three months, I got two jobs, one of which turned into a really um, important debut for my career internationally, and professionally at the English National Opera. And I come back with all this experience. And this is the ideal outcome of working with the Del Arte Opera Ensemble. To have a student who's done this and then transitioned on to getting a really major career break is the thing that they hope for the most. And I come back to start working on my second show. And it's a comedy. It's a show within a show, super fun. We do music rehearsals. And we take a week break around 4th of July to then start staging rehearsals. I then go home, and here's where the, another secret or a surprise gift of working with this group and music in general comes into my life. Uh, I had gotten home, we hung out, we had dinner, we went to a movie till one in the morning. The next day, uh, we're preparing for Fourth of July and cooking dinner and whatnot. And I'm taking a nap, and I wake up to my father screaming. And he had found my mother who had died of a heart attack in our bathroom. And, you know, it was one of those moments where the earth really feels like it stops turning. And, you know, clearly it was one of the most saddest times of my entire life. And literally four days after the funeral, I had to go back to rehearsal. And I had been walking around kind of feeling like a zombie. And if you've ever experienced the loss of anyone that's close to you, there's something that feels like it leaves you. And I kept thinking, I couldn't focus. I couldn't finish learning the music I had to learn. And I didn't think, I couldn't even get past, I couldn't even project how I would get through this experience. So I show up to the first day of rehearsal. And something magical happens. I start, I go into, I'm playing a dance master, so it's super silly, and I'm jumping around, and I'm laughing, and we're doing all these fun things in staging, and the rehearsal flies by. It's three hours long, and as I'm leaving, I literally stop, and I look up, and I'm like, I didn't think about my mother being gone during those three hours, and this was mind-blowing for me because I'd been participating in music for over 20 years, and I love music. I geek out over it. It's so amazing to me, but I had never had an experience that had given me basically a therapeutic hug, a place to go to where I can escape sadness and really flourish in a certain way. And, you know, I just found this as one of the best gifts I've ever gotten from music in my entire life. And it happened for the entire process of making the show. Every time I went, I could leave behind that sadness and kind of go to this other world. And this was a gift that I had not expected when I first joined this group. And it continues to just pay it forward. I, that particular role that I did that summer, that second show, I ended up debuting this last year at the Virginia Opera. And when I did it, I thought of all the warmth and heartfelt encouragement I felt from my castmates as they knew what I was going through. And I called my director to tell him about the show we were doing. It, was, it just had the same level of inertia and heartfelt kind of experience. And that continued to carry with me. And when I think about the aspect of volunteering and how intention plays through all of this, it's kind of taking me on this really wacky life journey, taking me around the world to meet these most amazing people. And all I can think of is finding ways that I can do this forward in my own life. I try to mentor students that I meet who are interested in going into music. I mentor my friends who are interested in going to Germany and, want, and have no idea, just like I did when I first said I wanted to go, but how to find a place, how much does it cost, how do you meet people, how do you sing for agents. How much German do you have to know? There's all these things that go into it. 
And I really think about the power of intention, how if you set your mind to really do something, and every action that you do honors who you are in the most honest way to your core, no matter where you end up, whether you're really off from your target, initial target, or really dead on, that's where we need to be. And I really think that when we volunteer, it's kind of like teaching. When we teach, I always find that when I am working with someone, I love tutoring and I love tutoring math, and when I'm working with someone and I fully give them my attention and I take myself out of the equation, I, I, want, I want to gain nothing from that experience, I find that I am the one that, end up, I, I'm the one that ends up learning the most from that experience. And I feel like the same happens with volunteering. There's this outward thing that goes out, and I feel like it changes the chemistry of how we are on the inside, and it changes the way that we relate to each other, whether it's the person that you buy your coffee from in the morning, whether it's the person you're working with on a daily basis. It changes our inner kind of composition to how we relate to the world. And I feel like when we volunteer, the biggest gift that we get is that instead of giving and feeling the greatness of that giving, we receive these gifts that continue to pay out in our own lives. Thanks.